Hi, I'm Catherine Pinkham from the Insomnia Clinic and today I want to talk about why sleep hygiene might be making your sleep worse. So sleep hygiene, for those of you who, who haven't heard of it, which I think is probably very few because if we Google how to sleep better, the first thing that comes up is a long list of tips which are sleep hygiene. So these are tips such as um, giving up caffeine, um, making sure that you don't go to bed on a full stomach, making sure you have blackout blinds, making sure your bed is comfortable, um, relaxation before bed, having a long wind down routine, not looking at blue lights, etc. etc. So, nothing on that list is particularly bad advice, and none of it is anything which would necessarily cause a sleep problem. Um, but what I want to talk about is how, actually, for the vast majority of people that we work with, they have already tried all of these tips and they very rarely make a difference. And I want to talk about why um, and how actually they can, can actually be making things worse. So in order to explain that, first of all, I want to explain how we develop poor sleep and get into the cycle of insomnia. So if you are, let's say you're, you're a good sleeper, you have no problems with sleeping, and then for whatever reason, you go to bed and you either can't fall asleep or you can't stay asleep and you have a terrible night. Um, fairly quickly, as humans, we are, we are pretty intolerant to sleeping badly and we want to try and fix it. So the first thing that we do is start making changes. So if I've slept badly for a week, um, the first thing that I would do is um, probably go to bed a bit earlier, um, maybe either drink more caffeine to keep myself awake or maybe drink less um, because I've read about sleep hygiene. Um, if that doesn't work, then I would perhaps buy a sleepy spray or um, perhaps start um, download a couple of apps to try and track my sleep. So what I'm doing is short term, I'm trying to find solutions to the problem, I'm trying to get more sleep. But actually what I'm starting to do is, um, is, is interfere in what my body knows about sleep and the learned behaviours that I have about sleep because I'm trying to manage it by using other techniques. So the more things that I try and I buy and I focus on and I Google and I ask other people, the more of that that I do, the more hypervigilant I'm becoming about sleep, the more I'm thinking about it and the more I go to bed with it on my mind. So after a week or two weeks or three weeks of not getting enough sleep, I would have done the whole sleep hygiene list by now. I probably never have a cup of tea or coffee at all because I'm so worried about it. Never have a glass of wine in case that affects my sleep. I've, um, after a month, two months, I've stopped socialising in the evenings because actually I want to make sure I can do my wind down routine. Um, I've cleared everything out of my bedroom. So my bedroom is now just a bed. I've got no TV. Um, maybe I'm listening to mindfulness apps. Maybe I'm trying to do lots of things in bed to try and um, relax and clear my mind. So actually my sleep hygiene is perfect. It's everything that, that is on that list. But really what I've ended up with is a load of things to try and force myself to sleep well. And by the time I've done all of those things, I get into bed thinking about sleep. I'm already wound up. Um, my adrenaline is, response is already, is already kicked in because actually I'm starting to fear going to bed. And so the more things I try, the more things I do, the worse my sleep gets. And this is how for me sleep hygiene can be making your sleep worse. So regularly we see people with perfect sleep hygiene who sleep terribly and actually there is very little evidence to show that sleep hygiene is a cure for anybody with insomnia and, and more and more that I work with people the more I see that actually it's making things worse. So I'm not saying that we should all be drinking coffee before bed and it doesn't matter about blue lights, I'm not saying that but when you have a proper sleep problem the fix and the cure that you're looking for is not sleep hygiene. It's CBT for insomnia and CBT for insomnia is not a program of sleep hygiene. So if you were drinking coffee before bed, I'd be telling you not to, but there's far more to it than that. CBT for insomnia is looking at um, you know, our internal system, our circadian rhythm. How do we get that back in line so that our body clock understands when to sleep? How do we manage our racing mind and our thoughts around bedtime and what do we do when we wake up? How, how do we create a much higher drive so that we fall asleep faster? Um, and, and all of these things are all questions that people come with, you know, I feel like I've unlearned how to sleep well, my body's forgotten how to do it. And actually that's true, our bodies have unlearned how to do it. And the more sleep hygiene things that we try, the more we're interfering in actually something that is, that is a natural process and that it, we are born with the ability to sleep. We have to learn for how long and, and when, and the more sleep hygiene style things that we do and the more things we buy and try, the more we interfere in that relationship and it becomes very diluted and very, and very confused. So if you want to feel more refreshed in the day, if you want to fall asleep fast, if you want to reduce the amount of time that you're spending in bed and thinking about sleeping so that you can have a better memory, more concentration, so that you can enjoy being awake and, and generally just live better, 
um, then sleep hygiene is not the answer. Um, so I would urge you to look at my website, theinsomniaclinic.co.uk. You can register for my sleep webinar where I talk all about how you can learn to sleep better. And for 80% of people um, who try these techniques, they, they improve their sleep and usually in under four weeks as well. So it can be, it can be a relatively quick, uh, a quick um, treatment, but it does require motivation. Um, but, but it does work for the vast majority of people. So do watch my sleep uh, webinar and that will give you lots more information um, about how you can start to sleep better. Um, you can also register for my online course and the first lesson is completely free. And that would talk more about um, the cycle of insomnia, how you've, how you've got into that, why your body has unlearned how to sleep well and the things that you can do to start getting that back in place. Any questions at all, please email me from the website um, or comments or comments below. Um, or if you join the webinar, you can ask questions via the webinar as well. So I really want to reassure you that actually I know that you've been given lots of sleep hygiene advice and don't worry that it isn't working because actually it isn't a cure for insomnia. Um, so it is a very, very small part of, of what is a much bigger cure. Um, and if you watch the first, the first lesson for free, you will understand a lot more, more about that. So I hope that's been helpful for you. Please let me know any other comments or any other things that you'd like videos on um, and I'll be happy to record those for you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.